Hi, it's Paul from Hobby Link International. Don't forget the subscribe button is down there and also there's a bell as well to get notified of future videos from myself and Kenny. Today we're going to have a look at one of Italieri's uh, recent sort of biggish uh, releases. This is the 132nd Tornado GR4. Okay, let's see what we get inside the box. As you can see, Tornado GR4, 132nd scale from Italieri. Pretty big box. Um, this side, um, pictures of a built model, some of the P that's inside. Um, and on this side, um, so that three decal options, picture of the decal sheet, more photos of the kit and there's nothing much on the ends. Uh, this is all uh, brand new models and they've also recently released the uh, an F3 version of this as well. So obviously just a few, change a few sprues and you've got the F3. So inside we've got basically a full size decal sheet, a complete sheet of paper We have photo edge sheet, not many parts, but uh, pretty big. And we get two books, painting and decal guide. I'll scan this and you can see everything on there. It looks like there's uh, version A, version B, Obviously, 2003-2010, the Royal Air Force. Uh, version C, um, again, 2011, and the colourful one, 2019. And then decals for instruments and weapons. And looks like there's, um, what, GBU-12s, Bos-107, Sky Shadows, air to missiles, pylons. So in the instruction sheet, well it's not a sheet, it's a small book. So there's 60 steps, basically 60 pages, going through everything obviously. It's uh, black and white line drawings, but it seems like there's plenty of space for everything laid out. Um, so it looks pretty clear. Uh, I'll scan all these and Put them online on the website so you can have a look for yourself. Looks like you can put the engines on, on stands or fit them, whichever you want. Um, yeah, lots of nice stuff going on. Detail in the cockpit, in the undercarriage bays. It all looks pretty good. To start off with um, sprue layouts, highlights the bits you don't need. Looks like quite a few weapons are not used in this version. They're probably they're obviously used in the F3 version by the looks of it. Um, so you'll have some uh, weapons for your spare parts drawer. And yeah, as you'd expect in this scale, lots of detail. So what sprues do we get? Um, nice big sprues, clear parts in their own bag inside there. And then we've got, this bag has lots of parts in there. Rubber wheels. Weapons, by the looks of it. And wings. And more wings. Okay, I'll just open the bags and we'll have a quick look. Okay, so a quick look at the parts here in my hands, but there will be close-ups uh, photographs of all of the parts on the website. And the link to that is underneath. 
So there's the clear parts. See this debt cord moved in the top there. They look quite nice. Here's the wheels. These are rubber wheels. Pretty not pretty hard rubber actually. Um, so that's a nice touch. Not quite sure what these are, but they're done in rubber as well. Maybe something to do with the swing wing. Then we got the bigger parts. Some really nice details on here. See that landing gear there? It actually has wiring looms on it. That's pretty neat. And you can see there's wiring on the side walls here as well. That's pretty good. There's a nose cone, which I believe you can um, put in the open position as well. And there's stuff inside to show. So nose, port and starboard sides here. Nice recessed panel lines, very nice detail. Instrument panels, they're pretty neat. Side panels, cockpit floor, rear bulkhead, uh, bottom of the nose. Some really nice detail on this, I must say. I believe that's the when you if you leave the nose open, then that's the beginnings of what you'll see. There's more parts to go on there. So we have here. It's like there's two of these sprues. Fuel tanks, engine. Nice detail on the engine. Build up the exhaust. Looks like, looks like those are main wheels, but are obviously weighted. So these, maybe these aren't those. We'll see when I look at the instructions closer. Um, again, lots of nice detail on things. So I'll take those two out. Uh, main fuselage, top and bottom. I think that air brakes go there. Landing bay, landing gears, side walls, a few large side walls. Again, lots of wiring, lots of fine detail on things. And this one, you've got two of these as well. Basically, missiles and things to hang under the wings of various sorts. Only some of these are used. But again, there's nice detail on these. Very nice detail. Wing, swing wings. Uh, nice, looks like there's flaps on these as well. Nice detail. Recess panel lines look very, very nice actually. Then there's the tail, um, the flaps. Big tail has distinctive of the tornado, looks like a nose undercarriage uh, oleo, uh, crew ladder. That's the an air intake at the base of the uh, base of the uh, tail. It's pretty neat. So all in all, very nice. Lots of nice detail there. Let's have a close-up look at. Uh, some of the parts and a look at some of the pages of the instructions. A quick reminder that over on the website, the link is underneath the video, there's photographs of all the parts and also photographs of all the instruction booklets, everything there for you to have a good look at up close. About 990 tornadoes were built of all different variants. Uh, they're operated by the Royal Air Force, Italian Air Force and Saudi Air Force and saw action in the Gulf War, Bosnian War, Kosovo War, Iraq War, Libya, um, as well as Afghanistan, Yemen and Syria. Um, all the GR4s are actually GR1s with a midlife update. Um, development of that was started before the Gulf War and incorporated lessons from the Gulf War. 142 GR1s were converted to GR4s between 1996 and 2003. This kit is a new toolkit. 
Only Italia in Revel have made tornado kits in this scale, and this is the only GR4 kit. Revel's kits date back to a 1986 kit, kit and all the others are reboxings of that kit. Uh, this kit comes in a sturdy box made of plastic, all parts are bagged, clear parts brew inside its own bag as well. And we have uh, 540 plastic parts, although about 89 are not used in this version of the Tornado, it points to an F3 version coming. 24 clear plastic parts, 6 rubber parts, 52 photo etch parts, decal sheet, 56 page black and white instruction sheet, plus a 12 page colour paint and decal guide. Okay, so rather than going through the instructions, what I'm going to do this time, because there's quite a lot going on, is just go through some highlights of the 60 steps. So, starting off with these seats have PE belts and details. For wheels, you have the choice of two-part weighted plastic wheels or one-part rubber ones, but those are not weighted. In the nose, you'll need 60 grams of nose weight, but they show you where it needs to be placed. Uh, for the instruments are mostly painted, but they do give you some decals for some of the instrument faces uh, to keep it realistic where it'd be a tough job to paint it. Uh, five, the f that you get full engine intake trunking from the intake through to the engine. Uh, the tailor ones are movable. Um, you get nicely detailed engines with thrust reversers that can be in the open or closed position. You can alternatively put the two engines on engine stands, again with a choice of reverse thrusted positions. Uh, the wings can be moved back and forth, and the pylons also move to keep the ordnance pointing forwards, like the real aircraft. Flaps can be placed opened or closed and the leading edge slats can also be opened or closed and air brakes can be open or closed uh, the rudder is movable uh, you get different aerials and details depending on the decal option you choose sidewinder and fuel tanks are the default underwing option with paveways under the fuselage you get a choice of sky shadow or bos 107 chaff flare pod for the outer pylons you also get quite a lot of munitions on the sprues that are not used. Uh, these are probably for the ADV version. Um, refueling boom, open or closed again. Nose cone, open or closed. If you have it open, there's a radar to go under there. You get a set of cockpit steps, but there's no figures in the kit. Uh, if you have the flaps down, you can't do a full wind sweep, obviously, because the flaps get in the way. Um, which is probably like the real aircraft, because you wouldn't have flaps down and full wing sweep. So that covers basically the main sort of options, and hopefully those images will give you an idea of what's going on and the level of detail. The painting guide is very nice. It gives you four RAF options. Colours are named and called out in the Italieri paint range and the Federal Standard references as well. Colours are also called out as needed throughout the instructions, and they send you across to the painting booklet where needed. So in overall conclusion, it's, um, as I said, a brand new boxing uh, for new moulds, very nicely detailed, a whole ton of options for having things opened and closed and stuff like that. Um, nice big model, will take up quite a bit of space on the shelf, but it should be a pretty impressive build when it's completed and should do very well for Italia as well.